Hello and welcome to the latest Epic Universe construction update. Now it's been a little bit since we've done a construction update. My bad. But I'm excited to dig into the latest construction progress. Plus Universal had a big reveal about a lot of things coming to the How to Train Your Dragon land so we can see how the progress there lines up with what was recently announced. Now, if you're unaware, Epic Universe is a brand new theme park coming to Universal Studios Florida, and it's currently set to open in 2025. Epic Universe is located just two miles south of Universal Studios and Islands of Adventure in Orlando, Florida, and this new park will include brand new lands themed to How to Train Your Dragon, Isle of Burke, the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, Universal Monsters, and of course my personal favorite, Super Nintendo World. So let's not waste any more time and dive into today's update by heading over into the Dark Universe. Over at the entrance portal, we can see the theming of this area is really starting to come together. And with the aged stone and weathered look, it really starts giving it a spooky gothic vibe. And in front of the entrance portal itself, we can see another colorful pattern concrete area that is being constructed. The framing you see at the left is for the frame of the Celeste Tiki Bar. We're gonna tiki fly the place. In this reverse angle of the portal, we can also see at the left is the Blue Dragon Pan Asian Restaurant, and we can see more trees have been recently planted on the backside of the portal. Near the entrance to the land, we can see the broken stone gate where guests will enter the land on a winding path at the right, past the gravestones and a crypt. And more details are emerging on the front of the Dark Manor. At the arrows, we can see recently added walls and the sculpted vines are still covered in protective plastic. And here we can see the current pavement work in progress near the gate of the Dark Manor, which is actually a concrete pour that is being sculpted to look like individual pavement stones. Now I like this look and vibe as it gives it a very authentic feel when we're talking about a Dark Manor, an older looking building. And I kind of hope they use this all over the land. And that cottage that we have seen some progress through the last few videos is coming along very nicely, about the same pace as the manor, and is likely to get some exterior work started on it very soon. And over at the Burning Blade Tavern, we can see there is still scaffolding preparing to install the windmill blades, which in some capacity we do know will have flames on them, but it is currently unknown how often this effect will be used once it is operating. There are also some more trees that have been planted on the hillside over here at the Burning Blade Tavern. And the village in the Dark Universe is starting to come together as we can see much of the exterior theming is complete or near complete on many of the buildings. And over at the Curse of the Werewolf roller coaster, we can see the wagon that we saw in the staging area a few months ago has indeed made its way into the queue of the ride. And zooming out a bit, we can also see how many trees have been added to this area. And again, will likely be hard to see much of the progress in the queue of this ride going forward. We can also see in the top right of this photo where a service building has been recently constructed. Well, that's all really to check out in the Dark Universe, but let's head over into the Wizarding World of Harry Potter Ministry of Magic to see the progress over here. Here's a great view of the entrance portal to the Wizarding World, and we can see the artwork on the facade looks complete as well. And here's a great view of the Poor Saint Denis. I did it! I did it! That guests will walk through to enter the streets of Paris. And as we look in this area just past the Poor Saint Denis, we can see a lot of the scaffolding has come down in this area as a whole. And in this series of photos, we can see some of the graphics that are on the building facades in the land, as many of the details of the buildings and how they will look once completed are starting to emerge in the Wizarding World. Here in this shot, we can see there's been a concrete pour for the street, so likely this entire land will soon have concrete pours for the streets completed. And here is what is likely the entrance for the theater show, and the foundations that you can see here are for a circular tent that will be part of the intersection of five streets in this land. We can also see graphics on the building facade, likely for a store in the land. Now we've seen the same view a few times, but here's the entrance for the top secret Ministry of Magic attraction that is currently being built. And I just say top secret because we have zero details from Universal about what this ride will be, other than rumors, of being some sort of elevator inspired ride based on the Ministry of Magic. Zooming out a little here, we can see where some main aspects of the land will be. At one is the theater show entrance, at two is the Ministry of Magic attraction entrance, and at three behind the building is the extended queue of the Ministry of Magic ride. Now, there's not much else to check out in this land that we can see. A lot of scaffolding is down. Again, a lot of the details are starting to emerge, so I'm really excited to see what we can learn about this land, especially the Ministry of Magic ride, which hopefully Universal will announce sometime very soon. But let's head on over into the Super Nintendo world to check out the progress over here. In the Mushroom Kingdom, we can see a conch door has been added to Yoshi's Adventure. 
And here we can see the entrance to Yoshi's Adventure at the bottom. And we can also see a Yoshi peeking out from a ride car if we look very closely. And in a newer photo, we can also see a bunch of uncovered cars on Yoshi's Adventure. We can also see a conch door again, a piranha plant, and an egg car can be seen. Now, one of my favorite things to check out when doing these construction updates is Mount Beanpole. Now, it doesn't look like anything else has been added to it lately, but I just like looking at it. It's beautiful. And here we can see another conch door and a good look at a pyramid from the Mario Desert levels that old school Nintendo players will know very well. And here at the arrow, we can now see the entrance of Toad's Cafe right here. And here in this straight down view in the Mushroom Kingdom, we can see at one is preparation for a concrete pour, and at two is a fountain outside of the Nintendo store, and at three is the Pizza Moon restaurant. And over at Bowser's Fortress, which is the entrance to the Mario Kart attraction, we can see it is completely covered in scaffolding with exterior work ongoing. And zooming out a little, we can see the area around Bowser's Fortress is a bustling one. At the arrows, we can see two piranha plants and a thwomp is at the center. And here is a better look at one of those piranha plants that will be all throughout the land. And here in this area in front of Peach's Castle, we can see the progress there, but we can also see in the courtyard where previously there was a boom lift that I was very curious how it would get moved out of there. Well, it is now gone. I am very, very sneaky, sir. Over in Donkey Kong Country, we can see near Minecart Madness where there is a pair of pillars that have been recently added. And here is the status of some of the rock work near the splashdown area of Minecart Madness. Here is the backside of what will be a giant Donkey Kong waterfall that is part of Minecart Madness. And here in this concept art, we can see what this will look like on the front side once it is completed. And here's the current work on the barrel that will be placed near the top of the Donkey Kong roller coaster lift that will launch riders into the ride. And in this wide shot of Minecart Madness, we can see at one, a recently added character. At two is a recently revealed wood plank at the track. At three, we have one of the two screaming pillars. And four is track moved inside the car maintenance bay. Now there really isn't too much else to check out at this time over here in Super Nintendo World, but let's head over into the How to Train Your Dragon Land Isle of Burke, as Universal just made a bunch of announcements about this land last week. So let's check a look on the progress here and see how it lines up with the announcements from Universal. Here in this view of the second launch of Hiccup's Wing Gliders, we can see the progress on the kids' Viking training camp play area. Now I can say this is something our kids are going to absolutely love about this land. And staying in the Viking training camp area, here is a circle of pedestals with mounting plates for features in the play area. And at the front of the land where Hiccup's Wing Glider's roller coaster dives under a bridge and circles a few sheep, we can see a lot of green is really starting to pop up here. Looking closer, we can see sheep staged at an area over here at Hiccup's Wing Gliders. There's also some plant or shrubbery that has been planted here as well. And here's a look at the theater for the Untrainable Dragon Show that we can see has a line of trees that was recently added near the entrance to hide views of the back of the house area over here. And here's a view of an interesting square of land in a fenced off area near that theater. Now Universal did announce this past week that quote, you may even catch a glimpse of dragons flying high above the village. So this could be a staging area for something to do with that in this square. Over at the boat ride in the land called Fire Drill, we can see there is now some water in the ride area, and we can also see the first boat currently staged in a service canal. And here's another view of the Fire Drill boat ride where we can see some more boats that are part of this ride. And we can see in this view where the queue area will be under tents at the frames near the bridge at the right, and at the entrance to the Untrainable Dragon Show near the line of trees there. Here's a view of Spitfire Grill, and we can see some artificial trees over here and this seating area for this quick service restaurant will be through the arched frames and it will be along the waterfront. Here we can see where there will be some Viking houses placed on top of the platforms over here. And here's a look at some of the Viking houses that will make their way to that area that are currently being staged. And here's a look at the themed grandstand construction that will be near Dragon Racers Rally and where Hiccup's wing gliders will go through those grandstands. And speaking of Hiccup's wing gliders, we can see a coaster train stopped on the tracks that has test dummies in them as this ride is currently undergoing ride testing. And looking over at Dragon Racers Rally, we can see a new log structure in the land. At two is the entrance 
to the attraction. And at three, dragon houses or box seats that are in the grandstands. And again, the roller coaster hiccups winged gliders will go through this area. So it's gonna be a very active and kinetic area. Well, that's it for over here in the How to Train Your Dragonland Isle of Burke. But let's head over to the center of the park, which is Celestial Park and check out the progress over here. Now, one of the most anticipated rides in all of Epic Universe is Starfall Racers. And progress wise, there isn't much to report on this ride since the last time or the main theming element itself, really. But we can get a good look at the development of the extended queue area for Starfall Racers. And at the bottom center is a long paved area, and this will be the longest section of the queue, likely. Heading further into Celestial Park, we can actually get a glimpse of the windows that will be part of the Atlantic restaurant. In this view, we can see the Atlantic will have cascading water features on both sides, and there's a little water in the pond area so we can get an idea of what this will look like once it's completed. Now, this is a cool shot here. As we can see, a large crane is placing a top framing element on top of Constellation Carousel. We can also see that the paint has started on the adjacent pond floor and recently added rock work at the base is ready for paint as well. And again, another cool shot over here at Constellation Carousel as we do have some perspective of how big this ride is as these workers in this photo do give it some scale. Now it's hard to see inside the carousel, but we can see an elevated circle was recently added at the center of the rotating platform. And if you remember correctly from Universal's announcement, this ride has a unique rotating platform floor and riders will go up over six feet in the air and other cool aspects of this ride that I'm very excited for. And here we can see the progress of the Blue Dragon Pan Asian restaurant, which is at the base of the Helios Grand Hotel, which is inside the park. Now, rockwork bridges and a few more trees have been added recently at the cascading water feature here. And we can get a good look here at the water feature that will greet guests as they enter Epic Universe just under the entrance Kronos. And over at the Helios Grand Hotel, we can see there is some metal elements being placed on the dome that's going to sit up top of the hotel. And here we can see the current progress on the pool and recreation area of Helios Grand Hotel. Now there really isn't much else to report on with the Helios, it's coming along nicely, but outside of the dome, we can't really see too much in the way of exterior progress. And also when it comes to the two hotels outside of Epic Universe, here's a couple of pictures of them, but there really isn't much to report on here as work on the exterior colorful tiles is still ongoing. And there isn't much in the way of visual progress, but the pool area is slowly starting to come together. All right, before we end our tour of the construction here, something that is gonna become a very relevant topic with the construction of Epic Universe is the infrastructure in terms of how guests are gonna get in and out of Epic Universe, parking and things of that nature. So let's check out some of the infrastructure updates that we can see right now. Now, something we do know is Universal is gonna be utilizing a fleet of electric buses and they are gonna have dedicated lanes on Kirkman Road for buses to come in and out of Epic Universe and transport guests to and from the main Universal Studios campus. And in this view, we can see at one, the exclusive Universal Orlando lanes in the median of Kirkman Road for the buses. At two, we have a decades long location of an electrical power transfer yard. At three is the site of Universal service area for the fleet of electric buses, which we just talked about. And at four is an elevated traffic circle area as this will be part of easing the left turn into the parking area. Having driven over in this area quite a bit, I am very curious to see how the traffic will be handled over here because if you haven't been here, really where this park is going is just a normal two lanes going each way type of road. So the traffic in this area is gonna be very immense once Epic Universe is open. So I am really curious to see how they're gonna direct traffic and how it will be handled as we get closer to Epic Universe opening. Now here's a good look at some of the traffic flow for Epic Universe. At one, we have the day guest parking entrance. At two is a parking toll plaza location. Three is an exit from parking. And at four is an exit from parking, but there's a split that bypasses the traffic circle. And a part of Epic Universe that a lot of people don't know about is that most, if not all, of Universal's main office buildings are gonna be over in the Epic Universe area. And here is a view of what is believed to be an office building for Universal Creative. Well, that's going to be it for this Epic Universe construction update. Again, sorry for the long delay in getting another video out. Just had a lot of stuff going on, but oh, I'm so sorry. We'll get much more videos out on time going forward. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel before you go. And as always, we will be doing more Epic Universe news updates, land previews, and construction updates as work on this new part continues. Also here at Capture the Magic, we have informational videos to help you have the best time when heading to Universal Studios and or Disney World on your next vacation. 
And if you want even more Universal Studios and Disney World information, you can check out the Capture the Magic podcast, where we share tips, reviews, money-saving strategies, and much more. You can find the podcast wherever you listen to podcasts and also here on YouTube over at CTM Podcast. Given all the announcements from Universal about the How to Train Your Dragon land, what part about that land are you most excited for? Personally, for me, I think it's still Hiccup's Wing Gliders, but I think a low-key one that our kids are really going to enjoy is the Vikings Training Camp. Let us know in the comments what you're looking forward to. And until next time, we will see you in the parks.